When I first founded the farm in 2002, it was just a derelict site. But now we have tons of animals in all shapes and sizes, from our crocs to our friendly goats. In this series, you'll see the ins and outs of farm life, from meeting the animals to dining in our restaurant. There is something for everyone. Welcome to Jimmy's Farm. In this episode, learn about our adorable armadillos, meet our zebus, and get to know our new baby of the farm, Tobias the Tapir. Let's get into the episode. Here at Jimmy's Farm, we have loads of amazing staff working every day to keep the animals happy and the farm in check. Um, we've got six banded armadillos here at Jimmy's Farm. There's over 20 different species of armadillos, um, but our armadillos are found in South America, um, Bolivia, Paraguay, and Brazil. So north of South America is where you'll find these little cute guys. So they've got massive, massive claws in the front of their feet. If they would come out and show you them. Um, but they're about that big. So in comparison to their tiny little feet, which are about that, they're about the same size, if not a little bit longer. Um, they have very powerful front legs. Um, they've got very, very big claws on their legs as well. And they're very good at scraping away the dirt. So obviously they're armor, so not many animals have armor like that. Um, so different species of armadillos can do different things. So a lot of people think they can all curl up into a ball. They can't, that's only the three banded. Um, these guys are far too big to curl up in a ball, so their armor plates across them. People don't expect to see them running around their enclosure as fast as they go around. They're quite amusing when people see them zooming around the enclosure, they don't expect them to be that fast. So they'll run away to their hole, bury themselves back underground and they'll bury themselves in a hole. So they'll scrap the soil up behind them so nothing can follow them down the hole as well, which is quite clever. So they live in areas like this, um, so they need it a little bit moist as well. So they're inside, they're on like a coconut husk. Um, so they need the ground to be a little bit moist because otherwise they can't dig. If you think if they were in a completely dry place, the sand would be a lot harder, it'd be a lot harder to dig. Um, so inside their house, um, the soil that they're on, I just wet it down every day to keep the humidity up and it is quite warm in there. So it's around 21, 22 degrees in there as well. So our armadillos um, have a diet which reflects the diet that they have in the wild. So armadillos are omnivores. So which means they pretty much eat anything, they're not very fussy. So in the wild, they'd eat fallen fruits that have fallen from the trees down in the rainforest. Um, they'd eat nuts that would fall down as well, but they'd also eat insects, small mammals, eggs, anything they can get their hands on really. Um, so all different predators out in South America. So any kind of carnivore would try and eat them. Um, birds of prey also would kind of would try and eat them. Um, that's why the safest place is underground. That's why they sleep underground because birds of prey aren't gonna see you. Um, any kind of carnivore. Um, so you're looking at jaguars and stuff like that out there. Um, these are brilliant animals for cubs because they're not gonna do much damage to a cub back. Um, and although that armor does give them some protection, it's nothing against a cat's, a cat's jaw. Aren't they fascinating? Armadillos are the best proof that animals don't have to be fluffy to be cute. Recently, we got a new addition of zebus to our African section of the wildlife park. Let's go see what they're up to. Um, a dwarf zebu is a kind of cow, um, so it originates from the zebu, which is sort of like the sacred cow of India. So it's a mini version, mini version of them. Um, the zebus came to us from Lake District Wildlife Park, um, which was a bit of a journey for them. They got about a five hour journey down here to Ipswich, um, which they travelled very, very well. Um, they were collected from the same company that transports our stuff punches, so they had luxury horse box journey on the way down. Um, so miniature zebu are strictly herbivores. Um, here at the park, they get a diet of hay, um, grass from their paddock that they're in, and then they get some um, cow nuts that um, they really enjoy. Um, and they also quite like the public animal feed, so all of the public when they go around the park, if they purchase some animal feed, they can hand feed the zebu on their way around and they're super friendly and they absolutely love it. Um, so their enclosure that they're in at the minute is sort of um, in the middle of the park and it's quite a nice one in the fact that they are around the public a lot, so it's quite nice that they can have interaction with them um, and it helps make them friendly and the public loves seeing them as well because they're a little bit different. Um, their enclosure is slightly different to what they'd have in the wild in the fact that the grass here is probably a lot nicer and um, so I guess they're spoilt with that a little bit. <laughs> Zebu um, originate from, they are a domesticated breed, um, they're mostly found in North Africa to begin with but you can find them all over Africa now. 
Um, they are a domesticated breed of cattle, um, so they are farmed throughout Africa. Um, the larger domestic zebu is a much bigger species of cattle, and um, the dwarf version is not around as much in Africa. My name's James, um, so I'm one of the rangers here at Jimmy's Farm. Um, so I tend to do a lot of cover days, so I uh, look after the other staff here. Uh, any days they have off, then I hop on their sections and just basically look after their sections for the day, uh, basically. So, um, a bit of a floater, basically, uh, in, uh, in not so nice terms. So, um, so the section I'm on today is what we call our top section. Uh, one of the most favourable things that we have here on this section is certainly basil. So basil is our anteater, and what we'll do in just a second is go over and give him some lunch as well. We have a new capybara as well, basically. So he came to us, uh, sorry, two days ago, um, all the way from uh, Shepworth uh, Wildlife Park, basically. So he's going to be our new male. Unfortunately, we lost our elderly female last week. So uh, just what that does mean, though, is that we can bring in uh, younger, fresh blood, basically. So our male has just come in to. Uh, potentially get that up and running for us and we've also got four new females coming in later today as well. So the young man just poking his head out at the minute, this is Preston. So uh, Preston has came to us with a little bit of an attitude uh, from what we've been told by his keepers over at Longley. Uh, we haven't yet seen that here, well, he's quite a lovely boy. Um, and this young lady who's gone in to hide him, who hopefully will come out, is called Polly. Um, so, uh, Preston and Polly here. They are chopper quick, aren't they? Yeah, they can be, yeah, especially him. He's, uh, he's like a live wire, he zips about. Um, he's got plenty of energy, whereas she likes to hide away a little bit more. She's a little bit more of a shy nature, um, which is what she's doing at the minute, just because there's an abundance of people that's just come in here, so she's just hiding away a little bit at the minute. Whereas uh, this young man doesn't care for about tension and stuff uh, at all. Now, Preston uh, is on a little bit of a diet at the minute. He's uh, a little bit overweight. Um, all these bits on his back end here shouldn't be poking out as much as that. So uh, he's just got to get a little bit of weight off him. Um, but we do keep regular like, weights on them though, um, just to try to keep a good check on them uh, and make sure they're nice and healthy as well. Thanks for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed getting to know a little more about the Farm and Wildlife Park. If you wish to come and visit, check out our website where you can find more information. Hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you're notified when the following episodes are released. See you soon and share the good life.